So here's the thing, if you try and chain normal dashing, you notice that Maria has a small delay till she starts the next one. The same goes for your double dashing ability. However, there's a trick. If you hold down the guard button and get the timing just right, you can chain those suckers forever and believe me, this technique will come in handy, especially against enemies who have multiple long range attacks and attack very quickly when up close. And since each dash is short, you'll always be ready to counterattack. Take a few minutes to learn this, you won't regret it. The second tip is actually a double one. The first part of it being you have four slots to equip spells, but I always say that you actually only have three. Make sure to always leave your healing spell equipped in one of them, and don't worry, you get your first healing spell pretty soon into the game. Now, the second part of this tip is, if you're still green, if you're still new to this game, you're not exactly very confident in your skills, then first, don't be ashamed, it's part of the process. And second, make sure to always keep a stock of crystals so you can cast your healing spell whenever you need it. Avoid being completely empty, and sure, as you progress through the game, you begin to learn the rhythm at which your crystal gauge is going to replenish itself. You'll also begin getting more confident, but until then, keep it safe. And up for the third tip, still in the defensive department. As I'm sure you've noticed, when you're evolving Maria, you can pick between different skill trees so you can evolve your character to your own taste. And in one of them, the blue skill tree is where those abilities lie. If you've ever played Dark Souls or any other game that contained the pair mechanics, then you surely understand right out of the gates. This is very good because besides getting enough tactical advantages when defending yourself, you also gain the ability to retaliate instantly, allowing you to keep on the pressure. You can perform a very strong series of counterattacks, which can sometimes topple your opponents or even slow down time for when things are about to get really messy. Maybe it'll take you a little while to get used to this, but when you do, you'll be unstoppable. Next up, read the upgrade trees and plan ahead. Don't just blindly buy upgrades, remember, they require resources. And the more advanced the upgrade, the more costly it's gonna be. Maybe an extra 50 points of attack could seem really enticing, but surely enough, an extra crystal will do you better down the road. Now let's talk about offense, because after all, defense is good, but it'll only get you so far. The first and most valuable tip I have to give you regarding combat is know your opponent. This may sound cliche to some, sure, but winning a battle is all about knowing when to attack and when to hold back. Whenever you're facing a new enemy, make sure to hang back. See how it moves, how it behaves, when does it leave itself open for an attack. And in Valkyrie Elysium, there's no need to scan your opponents to identify their weaknesses, which leads us to the next part of this tip, understand your enemy's weaknesses. They are displayed on screen. So for example, an enemy may take more damage from a regular sword than from a rapier. Or maybe you're in a more flexible situation, allowing you to use a weapon that, while it's not necessarily the best to use against an enemy, it will be good against an enemy that's right beside it. Remember, the battlefield always changes. As for the next tip, it may be obvious to a lot of people, but trust me, there's a lot of people who are going to be surprised by this. You can actually open the menu mid-battle, because you see, with this type of game, some of us may sometime get the impression that we can't open the menu and equip different items. No, what you have equipped in your slots is what you get. However, in Valkyrie Elysium, that's not the case. So, should the need arise, maybe you enter a battle with the wrong type of weapon equipped, or you don't have the correct element to attack your enemy's weaknesses, hit the menu button and re-equip accordingly. The next tip I have to give you is a technique I developed while playing this game. I named it the Flight of the Valkyrie. In order to execute it, you need a skill called Chain Attack. And here's how it works. Whenever you use your energy hook by tapping the L2 button, if you hit the square button once, you perform a combo. And the good thing about it is that you can chain this attack indefinitely. You can even lift enemies off the ground or chain into different enemies. Be warned though, this technique won't work with every single weapon. I myself have only been able to execute the Flight of the Valkyrie with the Broadsword, the Greatsword, and the rapier. But be careful though, pulling the flight of the Valkyrie with the greatsword can be tricky. And also, you won't be able to lift heavier enemies off the ground. This technique allows you to perform a barrage of attacks while remaining highly mobile. If you master the flight of the Valkyrie, enemies won't know what hit them. The next tip is keep the pressure with magic. If you're a newcomer to this game, then maybe you'll have your doubts, maybe you won't know exactly when to use it. But in Valkyrie Profile, experience comes from combat. So make sure to try your hand out. Eventually, you start getting a feel for when and how your crystals are gonna be refilled during a battle. And remember, just because an enemy has an elemental weakness doesn't mean that's the only element you should use against them. I found out that the Ice Shard spell works wonders against any type of enemy. The Firestorm spell can be used to momentarily stun your opponents, giving you that brief moment you need to reposition yourself. 
or a quick succession of lightning bolts can have your enemies drain, leaving you only with mop-up work. But remember, if you are going against a tougher enemy, make sure to keep enough crystals to heal yourself whenever needed. And now I have a special request of you. Yes, if you are enjoying this video then please, I ask you to hit that like button and also subscribe to this channel to help us keep on growing. The more allies I have, the harder and faster I'll be able to be. And now for our last tip, know when to fight alone. Sure, summoning a Harriers is fun, it helps expedite battles, however, if you summon too much, you just might find yourself short on allies at a very critical moment. And you know what, I'll do you one better, I'll throw you an extra tip. Learn how to pair up your Ein Harriers. You don't always have to summon 4 Ein Harriers to come to your aid. Sometimes a mage and an archer can be all you need for long distance support while you fight from up close. Or maybe just you and your fellow swordsmen will be able to do the job. Remember, winning a battle is all about quick adaptability. If you put together all of those techniques that are handed down to you, I'm sure you'd be a master of the battlefield. Or rather, you'll become a Valkyrie yourself. This was Palmont speaking to you, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next round. Later.